core thesis of my YouTube channel is that every game of Scrabble tells a story, complete with compelling narratives, dramatic twists and turns, and satisfying conclusions. At the 2024 World Cup Championship, we just witnessed one of the craziest twist endings I've ever seen in Scrabble. In round 18, top experts Nigel Peltier and Laurie Cohen were neck and neck in the standings and set to square off. Although he may not be the best known Scrabble playing Nigel, this one has a consistently impressive track record in championship level events, including six top 10 finishes at the Scrabble Players Championship. Lori also has several elite results at championship events on her Scrabble resume, including an impressive third place finish in 2010. Nigel starts the game with good bingo tiles, but also duplicated R's and the dreaded WU combination, a problem he fixes with War for 14. Meanwhile, Lori has the J and two I's, and she addresses both issues with Haji for 14, keeping good bingo tiles. Using the Haji's hook, Nigel pounces with Shirked for 95 to seize an early lead. Though Lori answers with her top move of Milker, it's to no avail as Nigel immediately draws a second bingo of Neonate, which plays in only one spot on the board for 70 more points. Lori is able to cut the deficit somewhat with her stylish bingo of anti-life, but Nigel is close to yet another bingo with only the Q standing in his way. He could play Cat for 32 here, obstructing a nice scoring spot. He plays Chi for 31 instead, keeping the T on his rack, which hugely increases his odds of playing a bingo next turn. After Cat, his odds are about 55%. After Chi, they jump to 80%, holding such an excellent six tile leave. Lori, on the other hand, draws horrendous tiles, and perhaps missing the tough find of Varroa for 26, she plays a vow for 17, hoping to draw consonants. Nigel draws the Y, one of the rare tiles that do not allow him to bingo. He still has fantastic options paralleling the A of anti-life, including the nice t for 49, leaving the strong RS combination and even setting up a solid R hook to use in the future. His play of poetry for 51 is still a very strong choice. Lori could answer with Orzo for 47, but she elects to block the more volatile triple lane with Oba, saving the tiles for Orzo to play next turn, or perhaps playing something even better. Already up by over 100, Nigel snags the first blank and plays his top scoring bingo of Aegisted for 87. At this point, halfway through the game, Nigel is up by nearly 200 points, with Computer Engine suggesting his winning percentage is just shy of 99.8%. Although Lori is essentially doomed, she makes a fantastic play here. Zax for 66 is an obvious choice, shedding both of her high pointers in one go to push harder for an immediate bingo. She decides on Oxo for 55 instead, sacrificing 11 points to create a highly volatile lane that could deliver her the heavy hitting plays she needs to get back in this game. It also preserves big possibilities for the Z, including Ritz with an I draw and Zeta with an E draw. Nigel draws a vowel heavy next rack and makes his top move of Pudu for 30, using both U's. Lori draws an E, so this does block Zeta. She also draws the I she needs to play Ritz for 69. Wiz for 51 may have been tempting, keeping much better bingo tiles. Then again, the far right column is a critical resource for her that she needs to keep open. Without a great way to block that column, Nigel decides to at least block the other, more easily accessible triple at the bottom of the board with Vimen for 32 placing the V out in space to prevent easy overlaps. Lori's preservation of this column pays dividends now, and she makes the beautiful overlapping play of Cruel for 61 to continue cutting into Nigel's lead. That being said, after Cruel, there's only one realistic bingo lane left on this board, and Nigel wisely blocks it with F for 19, leaving balanced bingo tiles in case Lori attempts to reopen the board. Normally, with the high point BY combination in hand, Lori would look to do just that. 
but she manages to pull the second blank as well, and after some thought, she makes an absolutely incredible find. Using the Y hook on Ritz to make Ritzy, she plays Sabayons, spanning two double word scores for a whopping 115 points. It's her only bingo available here, and all of a sudden, she's up by 28 points on the scoreboard after trailing by nearly 200 just a few turns ago. Although Nigel isn't completely doomed here, if he has any doubts in the validity of this word, challenging it makes a lot of sense for 115 points, so he elects to do so. And when the word comes back good, he loses his next turn, and Lori can essentially seal the win right then and there. She plays Un on top of Sabayon's, blocking the S and A and leaving Nigel no other space on the board to play a bingo. After a few more endgame moves to play out the string, Lori completes one of the craziest comebacks I've ever seen in a Scrabble game, winning 501 to 485. Lori's four-move sequence of Oxo, Ritz, Cruel, and Sabayons required perfect outside-the-box decision-making and play-finding on her part, with each move flowing into the next. For his part, Nigel actually played this game quite well. It's fair to look back at his play of Aegisted, which scored six more points than any other move, and reconsider Steading for 81. The board after Aegisted is much more volatile, with several additional scoring areas to worry about. Interestingly, Lori herself didn't use either of those areas, but Nigel spent three turns addressing them himself, freeing Lori to use other areas of the board for her comeback. All that being said, if Nigel had played Steading and lost by less than six points, we might be sitting here wondering why he hadn't played Aegisted instead of the reverse. As if this game wasn't bad enough for Nigel, he endured another devastating bad beat later that very same afternoon against another elite opponent in Joey Krafchick. After playing the stylish Dog's Tail to take a commanding lead, computer analysis again estimates Nigel's winning percentage to be upwards of 98%. But after Joey's desperation opening move of outro, Nigel draws a vowel-heavy rack with two U's. He wisely plays Kuru to block the R, which looks like clearly the biggest threat with this ugly-looking unseen tile pool. Shockingly, he then draws OPQ from the bag, and Joey ends the game with the gorgeous out bingo of 12 mo for 84, collecting 36 points from Nigel to win the game by one point. Having both of these games occur during the same day might qualify Nigel for the unluckiest day of Scrabble of all time, but one player's bad beat is another player's thrilling victory. As they say, there are two sides to every story, and in this game, Laurie Cohen gave us one for the ages.